speakers, who is going to talk to us about the importance and the power of tabling. And especially if you haven't had a chance to do this yet, this is a really wonderful basic level way for you to get involved as a new volunteer. So John Gage is our New Hampshire South Central Group Leader. John's been involved with CCL for several years and has been very active. He's actually got his own web page there where he's developing a state strategy for New Hampshire as well. And we're really honored to have John on the line, who's been just a firecracker of a group leader since his own original engagement. John's going to quickly go over what, why, when, and where to table, preparing to table, talking about tabling resources and where to find them on community, which can be hard to navigate sometimes. He's going to be talking about how to really connect with people when you're out there on that human to human level. And then we're going to have a chance to practice in our breakout time. So without further ado, John, we're so lucky to have you here tonight and I'll pass it to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Brett. Okay. So I'll start off talking about what and why tabling is and when and where we do it. So tabling is, next please. Tabling is basically setting up a table somewhere where there's an event or heavily heavy traffic to be able to communicate, connect, and engage with citizens. And, you know, outreach is one of the five levers of creating political will, and tabling is a great way to do outreach. Why do we table? Citizens Climate Lobby does it for several reasons. The first one is to educate citizens, and this is to, to let them know that we exist and that there's a solution that will be beneficial, fair, and have global reach um, to, to share with, with people. We also really like to engage citizens in action. So one of the things we always try to do is have constituent letters for people to be able to do something when they visit our table. This is a good way to find new CCL volunteers. We've, um, I think we've, our chapter has grown more from tabling than any other activity. And it's also a terrific way for, to develop people in CCL. Um, this is another important mission of CCL is to, to give, empower people. And it's a great way to practice talking about carbon fee and dividend and its benefits and practicing the things that CCL teaches about engaging in a conversation with, with other people, um, list, you know, active listening and, and being very engaged in the conversation. And we also use it in our chapter to develop relationships. It's a great activity for people to get together and do something positive within the chapter. Uh, some of the people that table together really enjoy it as a social activity. When and where to table? Uh, well, when you walk around in your life, you see people tabling. So that's kind of uh, the first clue about where to table. But it turns out, you know, library book fairs and local town events are a great way to meet the general public, and we certainly do that. But the light went on for me last Earth Day when we tabled at the Concord State House for the Science March on Earth Day. And it was like fishing in a fishbowl because everybody there was completely engaged in needing a solution. And it was just meeting people who were hungry for a solution. And so um, we had about eight chapter volunteers, including two from an, another chapter. It was the first time our chapter had ever tabled, but we had two veterans from the Madonna chapter. And we were getting about 30 people signed up an hour. And this went on for several hours. We ended up, I think, signing up over 120 people. Um, who are so interested in CCL, they gave us their contact information. So that was a good one. Um, so thinking about how to fish in the fishbowl, focusing on energy, environment, and even just education uh, are really good areas to focus on where to table. So for example, if there's an energy conference or a clean energy conference, um, tabling at something like that is really powerful. You can get business and you know, contacts to make business endorsements, as well as a lot of people that are going to love to hear that there's a solution that they can help. Also, you can be a little flexible about where you table and how you think about tabling. It doesn't have to be go somewhere where you go specifically to set up a table. 
uh, movie nights and CCL sponsored panel discussions or other other groups movies are, are also great places to go um, after getting permission to set up a table and, and make connections with people. Even a chapter meeting, we set up a little table and, and if somebody strolls in because they've seen an event uh, ab you know, about our meeting but they're new, um, getting them to write down their contact information is a, is a really important part of being able to engage with them after that one meeting. And also public hearings. There was an energy strategy meeting last week in New Hampshire and I hadn't thought of tabling there but I had a couple things in my car and I brought them in and we ended up getting four constituent letters and two people uh, joined. Uh, so, you know, th these were people that were concerned about energy and of course they wanted to hear a solution for, for fossil fuels. So how do we prepare for tabling? After you found out when and where there is an opportunity, usually you have to get, or you should get permission and sometimes you have to register and pay a exhibitor fee. You can also often get a discount on that um, because we're a nonprofit. So it's worth contacting the people that are running it and seeing what, what kind of deal we can get. You need to find out what size booth you're gonna have and uh, will tables and chairs be provided. Uh, another important thing to learn is, is it covered and will it be power if you're planning on bringing a laptop or tablet. More preparation in, involves delegating responsibilities. So there's a couple different roles that you kind of want to think about and you can do all of this yourself, but it's you know a lot easier if you can uh, spread the, the work around and people like to be able to be responsible for something. So the first would be the event coordinator. That's somebody who's going to do the logistics, um, get things organized, know when it starts, stops, and kind of coordinate who's going to be helping out. Then you kind of need a setup team who's going to get there before the event starts and help set up the table, then covering for the event, clean up, and then probably uh, an important thing that you wouldn't think of at first is after you get contact information, it's really important to do something with it. So there's a data entry requirement to get the names and contact inter information into the system, and then follow-up. If your chapter has a member engagement team, you can do a handoff. If if that's left to chapter leader or, or you're still figuring it out, it's really important to contact people within 24 or 40 hours after they've given us information. So that's an important thing to, to make sure somebody's going to do. So what resources do we need when we table? So there's some must-haves. You need sign-up sheets. Uh, CCL has these online. I've got a slide in a little while with the URL. Um, so that you can just print out a bunch of them and and it takes people's name, address, phone number, and email address. It's really good to have clipboards. We ended up with six clipboards. You can get kind of CCL colored blue and green ones at the dollar store, I think it is, for a buck. And they're really convenient to both let people fill out their information um, standing up, but also if you're outside and it's a little breezy, it's a good way to clamp down papers so they don't go flying all over the place. Of course, pens, name tags are nice, um, almost a must have. If you're walking out in front of your table with a clipboard and a name tag, for some reason, people think you, you know what you're talking about. Even if it's the first time you've ever tabled, uh, you look the part and, you know, and they're willing to engage with somebody that looks like they know what they're talking about. Uh, so there's, there's intro, call flyers and actions for people to take. And generally the action would be the constituent um, comment letters that CCL uh, has online that you can print. Nice to have are, are things like displays and things to kind of make your table stand out. One of the things you can do is buy clear plastic frames to put um, CCL's accomplishments in so they stand up and people can kind of notice them easier. Um, you can also put a call to action in there. So as they're walking by, something standing up will catch their attention and they'll, they'll see that they can do something at this table. Uh, it's good to have handouts, flyers and brochures about CCL and fact sheets. You know, we have a lot of nice facts in CCL to share. How many letters to the editor we've written, how many visits to Congress we made last year and the year before. 
these are impressive numbers, and giving people something to to carry around and think about it is a, is a good hook to get them interested in learning more about us. Uh, and cookies are a nice thing to hand out too. I've I've heard that uh, some some tables will hand out a cookie for anybody who fills out a constituent form. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe that gets more forms filled out. Okay, so activities we talked about yes. constituent forms. What's that? Oh, I'm just saying, speaking from personal experience, the cookie is always a good uh, uh, kind of captive audience uh, for uh, additional letters. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, we like to bring a camera. Everybody's got one with their phone, but remember to take a couple pictures so that you can kind of share the event with your chapter and even online on Facebook to show that your group does things. It's a good team building thing, and it's also good advertising. In coloring books, if you're at an event that's going to have children around, uh, you can get the, the parents to hang around your table longer if you give the kids something to do that will keep them occupied for five minutes. Okay, so it's also nice to have a tablecloth, but not required. Uh, I like black because you can put white papers and, and things down on it, and they really stand out, and the, the CCL banner stands out against it. If you're outside and you don't have cover, then a pop-up canopy is a good idea, at least to have in the car in case uh, you're going to be hot from sun or get wet from rain. If you're outside, these other things are handy too. Uh, winds can play a role, so having some, you know, big shells or or beach rocks or something to use as paper weeks. And then the other things are just to kind of help hold your table together. You can be creative with this and adapt to suit the occasion. So at that climate rally, we printed out the Yale Climate Communications Climate Science 101 poster, slightly modified. We added the the sixth bullet because they forgot to talk about solutions. But they did a great job discuss, describing the problem and giving a little hope and doing it with references. So we added the carbon fee and dividend will help and provided some references that went through the benefits and printed that out on a foam board, two by three foot uh, size, and put it on a tripod. So it kind of stood. A little behind the table, but it attracted attention. Handouts from associated groups. If you have a, like we have in the Northeast, the Green Energy Times, and we have a relationship with her, we can get copies of that mag of that newspaper and have a couple on our table, and it just gives people something to, you know, draws them into your table. And then if you do have power and Wi-Fi and you want to make it real easier for easy for yourself as far as data entry. You can have a CCL volunteer sign-up page there, and people can enter their information uh, online for you. That that will save you, you know, five minutes a person. And if you're looking at 100 people, you, that's several hours worth of work you can save. And then also give them access to online action tools to send mails to the congressman, uh, and also play the CCL uh, government fee and did, dividend video loop. So here's a couple. References uh, for what the things that I've spoken about. There's also tabling training in that first link. That's under the community website under the Take Action section on tabling. And then the rest are mainly resources that you can print out, sign-up sheets, uh, endorsement letters, intro flyers, and uh, fact sheets. And I'll just say this, John's done such an effective job in consolidating our lessons on that first link. I don't think you have to listen to anything else. This is 15 minutes that you just saved uh, rather than listening to an hour plus. So <laughs> to get, John. and I know that we've got uh, one other thought before we get to questions, but if people do want to start thinking about that, John's going to have that after this last connecting with people section. Right. Okay. So, so I'll just make this really quick. This is all the communication um, strategy that CCL works on and a lot of the different training. Tabling is a really social thing. You, you want to be yourself and friendly and speak about the positive benefits of carbon fee and dividend. What you're doing when you're tabling people is not selling something. I look at it as you're giving them a gift. The people that will be really interested in what you have to say are already worried about climate change. And for someone who doesn't know that there is a solution that's viable, beneficial, has a global reach, telling them about carbon fee and dividend is really 
giving them a very powerful gift. And then the fact that CCL lets people become active and engaged uh, and work on personal development while they're helping get the problem solved, I think is really the main point. So we can skip through the details. Uh, and you can go to the next one also. But all of these are the regular CCL communication um, advice. And, and it's just being positive and making a connection with people, asking them questions to get them to talk about it, and then sharing, sharing the solution. So key learnings, um, practice talking about the carbon fiend, the, the laser talks, get your logistics covered, well, have fun with it. It's just an outdoor activity or an inside with friends. Connect with people on values, and then make sure you follow up with potential recruits. That's really why you're out there on a Saturday tabling instead of hiking in the woods. You're, you're trying to help make progress, and this is a great way to do it, and making sure that you connect with those people that you've got contacts for is, is a key part of it. Um, John, we're so grateful for your time. We have about three or four minutes here of questions, um, but without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our very own action coordinator, um, Todd Elvins, who's out in the beautiful area of California and has been a CCL active volunteer for nigh on a decade and absolutely helping take our leadership for the presenters action team, for all the other outreach that he's been doing now with the broadcast media team and all the actions that you're seeing every month. That's Todd's baby. He's gonna talk about scheduling and presentations tonight. His hope is to really um, empower attendees by the end to understand the scheduling process, be prepared to customize their own model slide deck and know where to find resources on community uh, for these as well. I'll pass it to you, Tom. Thanks a lot, Brett. Yeah, I'm going to focus on proactively scheduling presentations and delivering solution-focused presentations. So this will tie in real well with what John had to say about tabling. <clears throat> and of course, presenting, uh, scheduling and presenting fits in perfectly into the grassroots uh, outreach lever of political will. I know you're all familiar with the five levers of political will. It touches on the others, but it's really within grassroots. So in 2015, we started counting the number of presentations uh, that CCL volunteers give. And in 2016, we doubled the number and we went out, uh, 624 volunteers went out and gave uh, over 1,100 presentations, which is just amazing. We're on track this year to almost double that number again. So I'm uh, super excited about that. I should mention that uh, if you go to community and uh, click on connect and pull down the menu to the uh, action team directory and then click on presenters, that's the action team that we're talking about. And you're welcome to join the action team. We're the largest action team on community with 410. I gave my first CCL presentation in 2014 and I, uh, it went well, and I uh, crafted this careful strategy to give a lot more presentations, which was to go home and sit, for, uh, sit and wait for the phone to ring. And that didn't work at all, as you can imagine. <laughs> so I came up with this idea of proactively uh, scheduling presentations. It was actually a, uh, a structured approach to send out a lot of proposals for presentations and we found that if you send a lot of presentation proposals and then follow up with a phone call you will schedule between 20 and 25 percent of those proposals uh, will turn into presentations and this has worked out well for our CCL volunteers because some of the volunteers are just natural born schedulers uh, you know, they're maybe a little less comfortable getting up in front of a crowd and talking, but they're perfectly happy to send emails and make phone calls. And some other volunteers are just happier than a client to get up in front of a room full of people and talk about uh, carbon fee and dividend. So this division of labor has really worked out well for us. Next slide. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about proactive scheduling. Uh, this is the idea of making an exhaustive list of all the target places where your presenters could go and give a presentation. And once you have that list, you're gonna to need to find the contact information for the president or the leader of each of those groups or clubs, send each of those leaders or presidents a proposal and email, and then call, wait a few days to see if they answer the email, and most of them won't, and then uh, put in a phone call. 
So here's a little bit more detail on making an exhaustive list. And we do have longer training videos on CCU on this topic if you're uh, interested in learning more. But uh, some low hanging fruit are Rotary Clubs, Democratic Clubs, League of Women Voters. Rotary Clubs are great because they meet every single week and they always have a guest speaker. Some of them tend to be kind of conservative, but I found them to be just very respectful and great audiences. Uh, you always want to send your proposals to clubs and groups that have meetings of members. There's a, a club here in San Diego uh, called the uh, surf, uh, San Diego Surfing Club, and they don't meet. And so they're not a good candidate for us. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more at the end about how you can download our scheduler toolkit. And this toolkit is really just a spreadsheet in the cloud. And you can see it here in this slide. Uh, the scheduler toolkit is really a spreadsheet uh, that can be edited by multiple schedulers at the same time because it's a Google Sheet and it lives in the cloud. You don't have to pass it around. You don't have to worry about who has the latest version. And of course, your goal is to expand each of these 25 categories of target venues uh, with, with all of the local uh, instances of those uh, clubs and groups. For example, you might take the Elks and look in Google Maps to see where are all the local Elks clubs. So you'll be able to download. You don't actually download it. You make, a, make your own copy. It lives on your own Google Drive. You can share it with the other schedulers. And uh, the Scheduler's Toolkit also comes with example proposal letters, so you don't have to draft your own text. Step number two is to find the contact information. And that really, you are going to have to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat to do this, uh, to find the phone number and email address of the president uh, or leader of all the clubs and groups where you, uh, where you want to send proposals. Uh, if you look at the longer video, training video on this topic, there's a lot of tips and tricks on how to do that. So once you have the contact information for all the presidents and leaders of all those groups, uh, you're going to send them an email. And I mentioned you don't have to write the text. We have example text that you can, uh, you can get from the scheduler toolkit and you can modify it. And if you're sending it to a conservative group, you're going to want to have, uh, you make the proposal a little bit conservative and same on the uh, progressive side. And, uh, and once you send it to the leader of the organization, you're going to want to follow up with a phone call. Wait about a week, follow up with a phone call, and it's really interesting when you call these people on the telephone, typically they have a day job. Next slide. Uh, here is Lori Smith. She's the president of the San Diego Rotary Club. And when you call her at her day job at Prudential Real Estate, she's going to say, Rotary? I love talking about Rotary. And she'll take an hour out of her day when she's supposed to be selling real estate and talk to you about her Rotary Club, which she loves. And uh, at that point, you say, did, uh, did you, Lori, did you see the email I sent you about a week ago proposing a presentation for your club? It's no cost. It's nonpartisan. It's solution focused. And she'll say, oh, I saw that email. I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten back to you. I've been so busy. Tell me all about your presentation. And at that point, you got her hooked. And all you got to do is just repeat what was in the email. And following this uh, four-step process, you're going to schedule about 20 to 25 percent of your uh, proposals. So now we're going to move on to presenting. So that was, uh, we're going to wrap up the scheduling part. I mentioned at the beginning that we have a model slide deck, and this is a small solution fo focused slide deck. It's only 35 slides, and we want you to customize the slide deck. Don't use it as is. It comes with videos. There's four uh, three minute videos that come with the presentation which is just a great way to break up your presentation. You don't PowerPoint them to death. Uh, you know, maybe every five or eight slides uh, stop and show a three minute video and the audience will wake up and get engaged and ask questions. Uh, the model slide deck is always up to date. It's solution focused. There's hardly any gloom and doom. In fact, no gloom and doom. There's just a little bit of science at the beginning, which I'll, I'll encourage you to remove. Of course, you're going to customize the slide deck for your presenting style and for your audience. And it's e the slide deck's easy to learn. We had a, a student who learned to give this presentation in two hours and went out and presented for a, a student group. So it's not a huge investment. So I've ta I already talked about uh, customizing your presentation. Our slide deck, our model slide deck has been downloaded 1,200 times uh, by about 800 volunteers. All right, let's go to the next slide. 
so the the outline of the PowerPoint presentation, the model slide deck is is real simple. It starts out with connecting with your audience, and that's probably the most difficult part and also the most important part, because if you don't connect with your audience at the beginning, uh, they're just going to shut down and they're not going to listen to the rest. So take a few minutes to connect with your audience and I'll have some hints on the next slide on how to do that. Uh, then go, talk about carbon fee and dividend, why it's the best first step solution, uh, where it's been implemented up and give a case study about, I usually talk about British Columbia where it's been up and running since 2008. You can talk about um, yeah, how it appeals to both conservatives and progressives. I spend the bulk of my presentation here talking about carbon fee and dividend, and then I, uh, you know, seamlessly roll into the Remy report, which talks about the economic impacts. Uh, you know, they they did a simulation of what would happen if our uh, policy were put in place, and then at the end, just spend a few minutes talking about citizens' climate lobby and uh, why we do what we do and why we do it. And at the end, I like to wrap it up with just a single ask. I know some presenters, they ask their audience to do lots and lots of things. I ask one thing, and that one thing is to get engaged with Citizens Climate Lobby and advocate a, a, a livable world to the US Congress. So I, uh, I talked about connecting with your audience. Here's some tips and tricks for connecting with your audience. Uh, start off telling your story and make it local. Uh, talk about facts, not science. Science has become a politicized word, so we kind of avoid that. Quote a trusted messenger, a conservative or a progressive, depending on your audience, and identify a value that you share. Everybody values air, water, clean air, clean water, a strong economy, and jobs. Uh, and of course, there's more information in the CCU video. Next slide. So here's some rules of thumb. These are all kind of common sense start out. Uh, it's kind of like a meeting a member of Congress. Appreciate your audience at the very beginning. Uh, avoid science slides if you can. 70% of everybody in the United States, they know that global warming is happening. And so you don't have to talk about the science and just go straight to the solution. Uh, avoid gloom and doom. It's just going to disempower your audience and avoid complex jargon. There's no need to talk about anthropogenic uh, warming. Next slide. So now I'm going to talk about where can I get the scheduling toolkit and where can I get the model slide deck. So go to community. If you don't have a, uh, an account on community, you can just go there and get one. And once you get logged into community, click the connect menu and scroll down to action teams. And it'll actions actually say action teams directory. And when you click on that, it's going to look like this. There's 40 action teams. Click on the presenter action team. Once you've clicked on that, you're going to see uh, a page full of stuff. And uh, you're going to have to scroll all the way to the bottom of that page to see the five resources that are listed here. And this is really the, uh, the part that you're going to want to do on your first visit to the action team. There's a, a small slide deck that kind of repeats a lot of what I've just uh, said. Uh, uh, resource number two is the scheduling toolkit. Resource number three is the model slide deck. Resource number four, there's links to a couple of much longer videos on CCU. And resource number five is information on our monthly call, which is always the last Thursday of every month. At uh, There's a scheduler call at 5 p.m. Pacific and a presenter call at 6 p.m. And that'll be day after tomorrow on Thursday. Don't forget to turn in your field reports. We count on those. Uh, we'll have some awards at the end of the year for the schedulers and presenters who give the uh, schedule and deliver the most presentations. And we like to keep, uh, we like to brag about our statistics. So here's my contact information. I'm Todd at citizensclimate.org. If you have any questions, uh, Dave Kane is also uh, a co-lead of the action team. He's up in the Silicon Valley. And uh, Jerry Hinkle is also a co-lead. So we have three leaders of this action team. And you can meet us on uh, the last Thursday of every month on our uh, support call. I love it. Thank you so much, Todd. Um, but for now, let's just keep it simple. What's the one place that you want to look more into after being inspired by the rousing presentations that John and Todd have done? So it's very simple. If you're on the phone, you're automatically going to be assigned into a room. If you're on the computer, you're going to have to click a join the room button. 
I'm just going to open up all the rooms right now. Um, I'm going to close tonight by just saying, uh, if you're looking tomorrow, the website to find um, the best uh, links, you can just go to our core volunteer training page. You can simply kind of find that archived video and presentations linked right there. And we're really excited to have you guys here and jumping into the next opportunities for grassroots outreach. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening and make sure to click on